Isaiah, Isaiah 58 kind of blessing. In Isaiah chapter 58, it says, if you would give of yourself to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your people will rebuild the ancient ruins. And today is the beginning of a rebuilding weekend, amen? All right, now that we've kind of warmed up, we do wanna let you know that the love of Christ is going to keep our hearts warm because we don't have a broiler that's working tonight. So I'm glad that you've got your insulation and we just wanna give you a warm welcome from the bottom of our hearts and thank you for coming to Campus Hill Church. Um, my name is Pastor Shifra, Shifra Fipuliai, they call me Shif, and I'm one of the associate pastors here. You are always welcome to come to the church that is on the hill on campus. Campus Hill Church. Our name will give you the directions to where we are. And um, tonight and tomorrow night and the following night, so every night of this weekend, Friday to Sunday at 6.30, we plan to warm this place up in this sanctuary with worship. Amen? Yeah. We believe that the Lord has given us a great commission and it includes making disciples of every kind. And so to this weekend, we specifically focus on the socioeconomic disparities, but also the other types. And we have a sociologist, a doctorate, a experienced, highly seasoned, well sought after pastor who we will introduce more formally later on. But we want to welcome Pastor Jose Rojas. Thank you so much for being with us. Um, so without taking up too much more of your time we'll tell you a little bit more about this weekend our theme and the ministry of campus hill church behind this weekend as we go further on tonight i just want to welcome you to stand for a word of prayer and pastor hein is going to talk to god with us Checking, good. Thank you. Uh, I'm gonna let you stand a little longer than you thought. Uh, before I talk to the Lord, Lord, I just want to kind of say something to you. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to see all of you here. It's cold out there, it's wet, and I see you're all kind of warm and snugly, and, and just sit close to each other, uh, if you can, uh, within, you know, within family limits. And, and stay warm. We will enjoy this lovely warm evening. You know, when I left home this afternoon, it was this afternoon when I left, it started snowing just as we, as we got in the car and pulled out the driveway. It started snowing. And so it was snowing down the Cajon Pass. And uh, on the pass, there was an accident. Uh, a lady flipped her car. Uh, by the time we finally got there, because we were standing in a line waiting. By the time we got there, we saw what had happened. Uh, the car was lying on its hood, and, uh, you know, there were some officials there, and the lights were flashing and all that stuff. So I don't know any of the circumstances. I know she flipped her car, and she was sitting there on the side of the road, or standing there, and uh, my wife and I just prayed for her. God knows her condition. God knows her situation. God knows what happened and why it happened, how it happened. And so, will you just in your prayer tonight as well, remember the lady who flipped her car on the Gohan Pass. Uh, the Lord knows who she, who she is. As I look over the audience, I see a lot of guests and visitors who are not normally here regularly on every weekend when we have our regular church services. And to you, I want to say especially welcome tonight. I met some of you, some of my old buddies from another church district. Welcome here to, uh, to that family. Good to see you guys here. And uh, thank you for coming. Thank you for accepting your invitation because somebody invited you. And thanks for being here tonight. And to those who did the invitation, church members, thank you so much for making that invitation to your friend who is here with you tonight. Let us pray together. Father in heaven, as it is cold out there and raining and just a few miles from here snowing, we 
Thank you that we all arrived here safely. Be with those who may still be on the road and who may be held up in some traffic jam somewhere on the highways and byways of Southern California. And may they arrive here safely. We thank you as the sun is setting and another day is coming to an end and we can enter into the rest of the Sabbath and come together tomorrow to worship. Lord, we just thank you for all your many, many blessings, for the blessings of this past week, for the blessings that you still have in store for us for tonight and for this weekend. Lord, your treasure house is overflowing with blessings, and we are ready to, to receive those blessings until, as the song says, we want no more. We cannot absorb any because you have saturated us with your goodness and your kindness and your love. I pray for our preacher tonight. Bless Pastor Rojas as you have in the past, and may he speak to our hearts directly from your throne. May we hear your voice and bless us as we gather together tonight and again as we are reminded about the needs around us, not far from here, within walking distance, there's great need. So help us to, to be aware and to do something about it. Bless us now, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. You may now eventually finally sit down. God bless you. Good evening, my friends. I cannot tell you how grateful I am to be here. And I'm not just saying that. There's a story behind this, and I will tell you later. Let's just say I was almost stuck in Texas this morning. But God is good. We are here. We are cuddling together. We will be telling stories, so many beautiful stories. And I'd like to introduce you to a new song, perhaps, that you've never heard before. It's a song based on a poem that was found in the cracks of where people were held during the Holocaust. This song was created um, by the Happy Boys based on that poem. And it was written by people who have not only been displaced, but have always, always been found to be annihilated. Their race was just targeted. And that is not, not, that is not to say that it does not happen today. You know that it does. And just to be displaced and to be out of a home is already a huge thing. But I hope that in this story, um, it's quite repetitive. So imagine in your mind's eye, someone you know who was very close to homelessness it's quite a sad song, but there is hope within the story. This is We Long for a Home. Good 
sometimes quickly fled and left hunger and despair. Wherever we go, wherever we turn, always the same, making the mend. Everybody feels the same deep pain as I. to me this morning. Um, there really is no place like home, click, click, click. Um, and I live here in Loma Linda, and the fact that my plane landed on Ontario Airport is nothing short of a miracle. Yesterday, my friend got married. He's the guy who would film my music videos, and we've just, he's my ride or die friend, and he married my um, college friend. So you just have to go. And so, this church was so kind to let me miss one day of this so I could celebrate them. The point is, um, sometimes you have too much fun with your friends that you decide not to sleep. And my flight left at 8.27 this morning, and I woke up at 9 a.m. <laughs> God is merciful because I found another flight on a different airline, and I... I was shaking the whole time I was trying to find an, a new flight just because I did not want to miss tonight. I wanted to be here with you. Um, God will provide a place. No matter how many mistakes we make or how many bad decisions we make, there is always grace. And God will heal whatever we have destroyed and make it so much more beautiful. This next song that Miss Angelica and I will be um, giving to you tonight is called, If My People Will Pray, Then I Will Hear and Heal Their Lands, Praise God. We have the opportunity to heal people's lives. We thank you for being here today to be a part of this family. If My People. shall seek my faith 
The voice you have heard comes from Paulette Jimelon. Thank you so much, Paulette. You may not know this, but it may not be a surprise to you. She has quite the resume to her. And to be honest, with all the things that could be said, the reason why we love to keep bringing her back to Campus Hill Church is because she is, as she calls herself, a musicianary. Can you say that? Musicianary. It doesn't stop at musician. It takes on the form of a missionary because that's her heart. And we praise and thank Jesus for your ministry today. Amen. Um, so just a few things. She does enjoy teaching students in, her, in the Jumalan studios. And I was so pleased with my mother to be in attendance of her opening there. Um, I've also been a, 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 a listener and a worshiper in different spaces that uh, Paulette has ministered in, but she's not only a local, even though she's graduated from our La Sierra University sister school, um, I've seen evidence of you in the Philippines, in Jordan, and she is a musicianary. Amen. I wonder how God can inspire us to put mission in whatever we do. You know, there are so many different ways to be involved in unhoused ministry. Whatever we're already currently got our hands doing, however the Lord assigns us, wonder how God can speak to us, to you and me today, and throughout this weekend of how we can put mission and um, be a missionary as well. So um, this next video, we're gonna show you a video now. It's a scripture reading. But instead of um, asking some of our church members to read a, the script, one of our scriptures that really is the backbone of Parks and Streets Ministry, which is the unhoused ministry of this local church. Al Ursales, who is one of, the, one of the directors of our ministry on the ground, he took his videography skills, you see, he put mission into what he's already doing um, in his field, one of his expertise, and he took a crew to the parks and the streets of San Bernardino, California. We've also served Loma Linda, Riverside, Colton, Grand Terrace, but this video, you may recognize junctions and parks, maybe Secombe, maybe Meadowbrooks, and Baseline Street in this video where we ask our brothers and sisters 
in the parks and streets of our community to help us bring God's word to life. I pray that you will be blessed listening to God's word infused with their testimony. My name is Jay. I'm not exactly homeless, although my situation is not stable. It's in transition because I, I'm in the moving because of a job situation. You know, I I worked all my life. You know, I I started out cutting chicken neck, turkey necks. Me, like I say, I just got like this about a week and a half ago. Right now, I'm living in my truck. Well, I kind of lost my job, and when I was staying at People didn't get along, so I came down here to San Bernardino. I've been this way for a while. Been on bad luck ever since. Retirement type of deal. Been married six times. Got a divorce, 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 and they ended up with the money. That's how I kind of ended up out here. And, uh, I've been in the joint, and when I got out, you know, hey, I. I did this for five years and you know, I was embarrassed to go to my son's house, to my family, to my kids' house. So I went to the park here. That's the only other place I know. I've been coming to this park since I was a bubble room Water, mm -hmm. restrooms, mm -hmm. porta potties, um, even uh, you know, access to like water when we take bird bath showers, you know, and food. Number one on that list is like having people like you come out and just touch bases and you know let people know they ain't forgot. Well, like I said, you got people coming down and feeding people. I mean, that's you know, it, some people out there care. You know, like I said, you got some people really don't care at all. You know, I don't enjoy when uh, rich people or well to do look down on you. Know, look down on you and you're so much better. Just because I'm dressed and living in the park, they look down on me and everybody else. And, uh, you know, that's not a good thing. They don't care no more. People just, that's how I kind of look at it. People just don't care no more. Like they used to. Like I said, in here, not, you know, not to look down. Give people a chance. People out here, there's also a lot of good men and women that would love to have a chance to get out there and get a job, hey, listen to you people out there, you know, that are well to do, maybe you can help them, you know, and I know when you help your brother and sister, God will help you in many ways. Hey, so uh, what, what keeps you going, John? Hey, man, the man above, yeah. you know, and you people, I mean, there's days I'm out here hungry, and it's like people like you to the park and you guys pop up and feed us and things like that. And me, I just let you know I'm not, I haven't been out here like this. But um, I'm very appreciative of everything you guys do for us. I mean, you might have a son, an uncle, a husband, ex husband that's out here or out in the park out here someplace. One day you might be out here. God forbid. Yeah, I wish they would see me. Because I, <laughs> I love you dearly. And whatever, whatever I'd done or whatever I said or whatnot, I didn't mean to hurt them. I'm, I'm asking for forgiveness. Yeah. Young, I got two people, <laughs> and uh, 
Ben, Nicole, and you, Pierre. And I know I got great grandkids now. Maybe they'll see in their heart to forgive me. And give me another chance. You know, that was kind of the message Jesus had to thousands of Christian people. Forgive and learn to love again. So every night we'll give you a little insight on some of the things going on right here, not only in San Bernardino, but in Loma Linda. We have sites where we serve regularly in Loma Linda. I see out in um, the, among those who are gathered, and I thank you for everyone who's tuning in online, perhaps live or archived. Make sure to share this video, put it on all your social media platforms, and get the word out that more hands are needed on the plow. What did the Bible say, right? The harvest is plenty, but the laborers are abundant, excessive, few. And so I want to thank the few. I want to thank the army that is here, tuning in person. I've heard of, we'd heard about flights being taken. Um, I've heard some of those of you who drove from the Cajon Pass and it was snowing as you were coming. I want to thank you, however near or far you came, for being a part of this work. I see some of uh, representatives of other spiritual uh, communities, faith communities, local churches around who are involved in unhoused ministry. Thank you for coming and representing your local community and those tuning in online. And then those working in nonprofit organizations, whether, um, whether nonprofit or with our, some of our state agencies, we just thank you so much for pulling in together to do this work. Everyone is needed, all hands on deck, and it doesn't matter whatever limitations you may think you have. This weekend, I hope you meet someone, reach out to people who you may not recognize, and talk because we all have a similar heart, which is what has brought us here tonight, which is what has gotten you tuned in. So leave a comment or go in our, in our chat and um, don't be afraid to put yourself out there. You're with like-minded folks. So every evening we'll give you a little bit of an update on the report as far as Parks and Streets ministry goes. For tomorrow, um, we usually go out on Saturday afternoons and we huddle on the south lawn of this church. So it'd be the green grass that's facing what looks like a cheese wall. We stand there at about 2.30 on Saturday afternoons Please come out if you would like to experience food, water, clothing distributions. Instead of just generically giving out um, supplies or meeting people's needs according to what we think, there is a faithful team of students, professionals, and other very willing um, adults who help take inventory of people's needs and we try to meet them specifically. I was a witness of a Christmas banquet where I was so impressed at how the volunteers on the ground were able to give Christmas gifts with names on it, handwritten ahead of time for a happy reason and a not so happy reason. The not so happy reason because they've been there for some time. The happy reason is because they built relationship and connection with missionaries, with a local missionary. And so um, some of our report includes um, that we're continuing on our Saturday afternoon uh, ventures into the parks and streets of our local community. You can join us tomorrow. And this Sunday at 8.30 a.m., I know that just triggered a few of us, but this Sunday at a not too early of a time for this kind of work, 8.30 a.m., what time did I say? Thank you, saints, and it is going to be a special morning. We're gathering at the Victoria Seventh-day Adventist Church in Loma Linda to start a regular service of a shower trailer ministry. And I was just there this afternoon. It is all set up. 
and the Victoria Seventh-day Adventist Church has a nice um, parking lot with a fence, so our, we believe that that, as well as guardian angels, are taking care of a shower trailer there that's going to be meaningful to anyone who comes for a hot shower. And if you see someone, if you happen to be at the red light and you're not too far away from someone, tell them Sunday, 9 a.m., 8.30 for volunteers, tell them Sunday, 9 a.m., Come and get a shower all morning long. Whatever time you can make it there will be there Sunday morning starting 9 a.m. So there will be more information on that. Um, but just for tonight, before our speaker comes up, I want to reintroduce him to some of you. And for, some, uh, for others, this might be your first time, so take this opportunity to tell you that our speaker for this weekend is from SoCal. Okay, he might have come from the East Coast to reach us, but he's one of us. Do we like that? Yes, he knows our, our parks and our streets. Um, in his heart of prayer, I believe he has kept us. Um, you've heard stories of what it means, unhoused ministry, what that kind of work, how it has affected his personal life. And if you haven't, I invite you to stay tonight and come again tomorrow and the day after that. His name is Pastor Jose Rojas, born in East LA, and he currently serves as the executive director of a ministry called Puente Ministries, which means bridge, and it exists to reach across cultural, ethnic, and linguistic lines to inspire, mentor, and utilize a new generation, all hands on deck, of servant leaders, resulting in more effective organizational and corporate leadership. Pastor Jose Rojas is an ordained minister of the Seventh-day Adventist Church for many, many years. It says here 38 years, and for almost 20 of those years, he served first as director of youth ministries, then founder and director. Did you hear that? Founder and director of the Office of Volunteer Ministries. What does that mean? He was the founder and director for the Office of the Department that would send out missionaries, volunteers, at the National and World Offices of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Silver Springs, Maryland. As a national leader, he has worked closely with the White House, assisting the President of the United States in developing and implementing a variety of humanitarian objectives for domestic policy, and it has met the needs of millions of Americans. Um, after serving in a pre presidential summit on volunteerism in 1997, Pastor Roja Rojas worked with General Colin Powell to launch the national organization America's Promise Alliance, resulting in, and we heard this, I think on Sunday night, 70 tutoring centers being launched for underprivileged children across the country. And if you've heard him preach, I say you've heard him sing, and his guitar is here tonight, so I think that's hopeful for us. He is an accomplished musician and recording artist. He has authored several books and is best known to us as a passionate speaker and preacher of the gospel. Um, I think the other honors are very cool um, to mention, but I'm going to save a few things for tomorrow night, okay? So I will just end with... Um, more recent honors. More recently, Pastor Rojas was invited by the Pentagon to lay a wreath at the tomb of the unknown soldier in Arlington National Cemetery in memory of his brother, Jerry, who served honorably in United States Armed Forces. And if you heard the story um, from last weekend, or at our midweek prayer meetings, which take place every week, by the way, um, then you heard about his brother, a sergeant. And if you haven't, please ask someone. I'm trying to encourage you to talk to each other. Ask someone. Don't run away right afterwards. Stay back. Fellowship. Inquire. I know you will be blessed. And he is still madly in love with Ruthie, his wife of 44 years. Can someone say amen? We love that. Their four grown children, Veronica, Angelica, Gabriel, and Maria, and their two grandchildren, Ezra and Luna. We have one more song from our musicianary Paulette. But until then, and right after, you will hear from Pastor Jose Rojas. God bless you. Thank you. 
I've imagined him all of my life to, to have been the wisest of all of mankind. But if God's holy wisdom seemed foolish to man, then he must have seemed out of his mind. For even his family thought he was mad. The priests said the demons to blame. God in the form of that strange young man could not have been perfectly sane. We in our foolishness thought we were wise. He played the fool and he opened our eyes. When we in our weakness believed we were strong, he became helpless to show we were wrong. And so, 
<clears throat> we follow God's own fool. And only the foolish can tell. Believe. Believe beyond believable. Come, be a fool as well. So lay down your life for a carpenter's son, for a man there who died for a dream. You'll have the faith his first followers had, but you will also feel the weight of the beam. So surrender the hunger to say, I must know, the courage to say, I believe, for the power of paradox opens our eyes and blinds those who say they can see. We in our weakness believed we were strong. He became helpless to show we were wrong. And so we follow God's own fool. And only the, the foolish can tell. Believe what you wait not. Believe. Come. Be a fool as well. Let's bow our heads. Speak to us, Lord, for what we thought was foolishness actually comes from your throne. Speak now, for your servants heareth. We ask in the name of your only Son. Amen. I'm intrigued by two specific stories in Scripture. One is found in 2 Kings chapter 35. It's the story of this general Naaman, remember? Captain of the hosts of Syria. Naaman developed what today we call guerrilla warfare techniques. And that's when a small team of soldiers can raid a town at night as everyone's asleep and slaughter everybody. It's, it's, it's a middle of the night concept when you come heavily armed with specific objectives, you've had spies lay out the map of the town, you know where every house is, and you come in and kill everybody. Those are the techniques of war. War is a terrible thing because once you enter it, you have to win. And that means a lot of people are going to die. It's very upsetting, war. I've been in the room when orders are issued for war. I'm a pastor. Chills down my spine. It's a lot colder than this place. It's not that cold, you know, it's probably in your mind. I haven't worn jackets in years. People give me jackets, you need one. Merry Christmas, put it on. So I'll, have, I'll get this really nice leather jacket and then I'll be somewhere with a group of pastors holding an evangelistic crusade in Chihuahua, Mexico and it's snowing outside. We're at 7,000 feet and there's this one pastor standing there. Go, you look cold, here, try this. Keep it. And so for the next Christmas, I get another jacket. I don't know what it is. Uh, I, maybe it's a psychosis. I don't know. I, I, um, a friend of mine, well, one of our, my young people in Sabbath school in, in D.C., Kenny, I can't give his full name, he became a United States Navy SEAL. And those guys are trained to ignore pain, to ignore, they can eat stuff that a billy goat can't eat. <laughs> and they're trained to ignore the cold, to go into freezing ocean and swim 24 miles. I'm giving out at 24 yards in a single pool, two laps and <sighs> I'm getting out. A seal can do 24 miles in cold water. Now that's beyond human tolerance. These guys can sit in a thing full, a vat full of water with ice cubes, climb out and still shoot with absolute precision. If I got out of a vat of ice cubes, I wouldn't even know what a gun is. So I said, I want you to teach me. 
I want to learn how to ignore cold. And uh, so he gave me a few techniques, and so far it's been working. I'm sure you're really excited for me, and you're fighting tears of joy. That's why I'm not struggling. <laughs> we should have handed out blankets for everyone. You know that the boiler's out. It's uh, nobody's fault, but you know, boilers being what they are, this, the, heater, the heating system of the church kind of gave out. For those of you watching at home, this is immaterial. Just turn up your thermostat to 71. The rest of us. <laughs> <clears throat> in our last meeting we looked at prayer and we found that a good sermon will inspire the people isn't that true if a preacher does their job <clears throat> properly it will it, it, a good sermon will inspire the people but prayer will move the heart of God and sometimes we just don't talk to him. We only show up when we want something. We never pray till it's time to eat. Okay, who's going to have grace? As if it's a legal procedure to now technically be allowed to take your first fork full of food. Have you ever been in the middle of a meal? Oops, we forgot to pray. Why don't you pray? How come you always ask me? Ask him. Mijo, you pray. Oh, how come we read? Over the prayer. We actually have to add an article. We only talk to God because we want something. That's sad. If you have friends like that, they only talk to you when they want something. Don't raise your hand, just your conscience. Don't call your friends only when you want something. Call them just to say hi. Then when you want something, they'll really help you. But I have, I have those same friends. They, they only call me when they want me to come to speak. I'll never forget it. There was a, a rumor across North America that I had cancer. And I was dying about every three years on the Internet. Pray for Elder Rojas. And, and, and I'm not belittling disease among us. I mean, I, I have loved ones who are ill right now, too. But I'm just going to give you my little testimony. Uh, a conference president, one of our regional leaders of our denomination, called me. Oh, we, we had special circle of prayer with the pastors, and uh, we are praying that God will have mercy upon you. We heard you have two months left, and perhaps you'll come and speak at our camp meeting. Okay, <laughs> let me translate this little text that he sent me. Before you croak... Can you come and speak at camp meeting? I mean, not even in the face of a rumor of impending death do these guys not withhold the thing of inviting me to speak as if anyone were that good. Remember the, remember this adage, no one is that good. If God blesses, then thank God for being good. And, and, and God can bless anybody. Just, he doesn't bless just a few people. All of us can be blessed by God. And prayer does not change the mind of God. Please help us change your mind. No, no, no. Prayer changes our minds. Chair, prayer puts us in tune with the will of the Almighty. Prayer is not to convince God. Prayer is to focus on how we think. Because number three, prayer not only... Uh, 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 um, not only does God spare some people and, and, and bless them uh, from their situation, others are blessed through their situation. God does not remove what they asked Him to take away because the greater blessings to go through it. So some are blessed from it, some are blessed through it, but all are blessed because all prayed. Some people say, well, he didn't answer my prayer. Yes, he did. You just didn't like the answer. The power of serving community is that prayer is not about us. Prayer is about somebody else. And that's why this story of Naaman overwhelmed me. There's two stories really quickly, because I want to freeze you off here. You'd be chipped off the pew so you can go home. Some of you, I'm sorry. You know, this helps. Try this. I'm going to give a couple techniques. 
The other thing is, see, once you do this friction, these arteries immediately send warmed up blood around your body. I know that's exciting. Okay, number two, keep your hands and feet warm. So you notice I've been doing this. You never do this when you speak, but it really helps tonight. See, so then I do a little something and then I'm back to, okay, see, you didn't notice it, did you? Well, he's so laid back, that is improper. But see, this is, this is keeping me from trembling. My hands and feet are warm. So there's, there's an unhoused person out there, a person that doesn't have a home, and it's a cold night. What do they need? Gloves. Because if their hands are warm, and socks, if their feet are warm, that's 60% of warming up. So yeah, you give them blankets, but if they can huddle under with, with gloves and good socks, isn't it true that you wear socks in bed? Don't, don't, don't raise your hand, just your conscience. And sisters have a thing about frozen feet. There are husbands here who can testify to that fact. And I mean, two blocks of ice at the ends of their legs. And I mean, we're talking about frozen feet forever and ever. Amen. But if you keep your extremities warm, remember that. So now you're going to, for next winter, you're going to get your gloves. And you didn't think anything of it before. Guys, you don't have to get those cool leather gloves that cost 80 bucks. Just go to Home Depot for 15 bucks. You get some decent mechanics gloves. Get some black ones. They blend in. Take them to church. I like those. Did you get those at Macy's? No. Home Depot. Para siempre. Amen. See, you keep your hands and your feet warm. Do this when needed. And you're halfway there. More than halfway there. I'm sure you care, right? One day you're going to need it. Well, tonight you can practice. So if you're wearing a jacket, where do you always put your hands? In the pockets. See, so just remember these little... I'll, I'll give you a few more secrets if I'm in the mood to as the story progresses. Naaman led the armed forces of Syria and the king loved him personally like a brother. He was a top advisor to the king. And when you advise the leader of a great nation, you see the world from another perspective because you get to develop what's called today policy for that country. It's legislative agenda. What laws are going to pass? What edicts will the king sign? What are the things that are needed by millions of people in the population? How can you, can you pick up test scores in thousands of schools. And it was with General Colin Powell that we con conducted a, a research project that found the following, that if a child is reading at proficiency by the third grade, okay, so if a child is reading at proficiency by third grade, they are 82% less likely ever to get involved in crime and actually go to college. So get a child to read at proficiency by third grade. So we looked at each other. We, we need to start a movement for tutoring sites. And any at-risk kid in any elementary school, be it public, private, religious, otherwise, uh, if a child cannot read at proficiency, that, that means up to third grade you're learning to read. Fourth grade and onwards, you're reading to learn. Up to third grade, okay, let's all read the directions together. Now take problems one, three, everybody look on your book, one, three, and five, and work the problems right now in class. Did you read the instructions? Everybody, one, three, and five. Say it out loud, five, okay. So you're teaching the child to read the directions. But by fourth grade, all right, everyone, follow the directions. I want you to do problems one, three, and five. But if the kid still can't read at proficiency, what's he doing during the class? Throwing spit wads. I didn't do anything. Frustrated, embarrassed. 
the bullies are, yeah, that's the dummy sitting over there. And now you get to middle school. Kids 13 years old, yeah, man, I don't have to do this stuff. Can't read the directions. So you can't read the assignment for homework, so you didn't. And you left the book under some rock on the way home, and then it rained, and you bring in this ruined book, and now you're in detention. Well, be pretty soon, other kids are like, dude, I'm in the same situation, man. You know, you know this teacher thinks, you know, what I'll do is check this out. I say, I got some homies at the park, a las tres. We can handle this, I say. We'll give you some dignity. See, the, what was the base problem for this kid? Never learn to read at proficiency. And when you can't read at proficiency, you can't learn to think for yourself. You can always spot people who are well-read. They have ideas, they have attitudes, they have opinions. Oh, some of them have many opinions forever and ever. Amen. You know, you read too much. Well, that's your problem. I know, especially in committee. Because when you learn to read, you learn to think. Well-read people, you can spot them in the crowd. Well, I, I found fascinating the reflections of Robert Frost in his third movement. Of what movement? You mean the guy moved? No, no, no. Haven't you read the, the poem? And then he, they bring out their favorite piece, and you're just sitting there. Wow, this guy reads. And then to relax, he reads. And when he gets up, he reads. And then just for, the, for whatever the joy of it, he reads again. And so you see, the power of reading unleashes the mind. And when a child can't read at proficiency, suddenly... Somebody, he can't think for himself. Now somebody will do his thinking for him. Dude, just sell these little baggies, man. There's a lot of action out, out there on the other side of Redlands Boulevard. Dude, I used to pastor the 9th Street Church here in San Berdu by Waterman. You can't mess with me. I did my time. I've done San Berdu. I may be ugly, but I've been around and say. And let me tell you, these kids are wonderful kids. They're just hurting. Can't read at proficiency. I just graduated high school, and I still i am at a basic seventh, sixth grade, seventh grade reading level. I, got, I, I can't read a, a magazine, a paper, much less any assignment. And you want me to go to college? Now flip that. Kids eight years old, nine years old. I don't know. I can't read. My dad, he's been hitting my mom. I don't care. There's a lot of trouble at the house. No wonder this child's never done homework. Let's get him a tutor. A big brother, big sister situation. Okay, let, let's, we're just, and we developed with two doctoral degrees out of Andrews. We came up with a curriculum called Making Smileys, where you sit with the child and do basic reading and use these cards and it, it's a fun thing made for a big brother and a little brother and a big sister and a little sister relationship and suddenly the reading level of that child rises you've just helped that child go to college and never get involved in gang life or uh, use drugs or and i've done gang intervention my whole life when you work with a 16 year old hey what's up dude I've been locked up again. This is my 11th lockup. Okay. I'm proud of myself. I said, that's how you take care of business here. You get locked up. And I said, look at me. It's not. I'm not impressed. Because I'm looking at a potential doctor, a lawyer here. I'm looking at a teacher. I'm, Dude, you are bigger than this. I say, huh? Yeah, you're not going to impress me, eh? I got family buried who was cool like you. Now they're cold. There's another form of speaking on the street. We're burying a 14-year-old who was shot in the face in Bakersfield. And the 12-year-old comes up, and the mom allowed the injury to show. I want, to, I want people to see what they did to my boy. See, that's hood thinking. That's a hood funeral. 
And I go up and rub the shoulder of the 12 year old. So, what's up, mijo? We all gotta die sometime. No, we don't. Don't you mess with me like that again. We don't have to die sometime. We all gotta live sometime, mijito. I'm gonna hook you up. That's, you, know, you know what? Come over here. I pulled his ear a little bit. No, we're not gonna talk to your mom. But we're gonna talk to that lady right over there. We're gonna hook you up. I didn't do nothing. Exactly. Now we're gonna do something. You can call me Theo Joe from now on. I'm Joe, I don't know if you knew that. I, I became Jose when I became an Adventist. <laughs> I've always been Joe. My plaque on the street was little Joey K, Isaac Clover. I've always been Joe. Even in Mexico, I'm Joe. <laughs> anyway, the pain of being Adventist. I'm Jose. And so he, you call me Tio Joe from now. All right, Tio. You, what? Tio Joe. Andale pues, mijito. I love you, mijo. We don't all got to die sometime. We got to live now. See, the syntax is different. The language is different. But the soul is the same as somebody's little boy who's now come to the idea that dying is okay. We don't accept that, do we? So, so, so when Naaman raided this city, he destroyed everything. He killed everybody. But the one instruction the king had given is anybody that's healthy and young, bring them in and we'll sell them as slaves. And so... Uh, this whole family was killed, but they, they, they grab that girl. We'll sell her back in, in Syria. And then they, they had a group of little kids and uh, young people that they were going to sell. But everybody else got killed. Even trees were chopped down. The, the methods of Middle East war are devastating. And they still are today. It's it, so... so uh, uh, this little girl's family was slaughtered. And guess who purchased her? Naaman himself. The man who gave the order to kill her whole family. The, the man in charge of the entire mechanism that's destroying her nation methodically. Now she's serving at his house. And she's not even allowed to address him directly. She's the maid, the servant, the slave of the wife. And so one day, uh, Naaman was complaining about numbness in his extremities and, and some pain. And, but uh, he, he slammed this finger on something and he didn't feel it. And it turned out he had leprosy, a nervous disorder. At that time, was incurable. Finally, there is a treatment for leprosy. That has made a huge difference for those who work in, in leper colonies. Praise God. And so, and so, 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 so uh, he, he has this disease that means he's going to die much sooner than ever imagined. He wasn't an old guy either. He was in his mid-30s. And what is this? The scripture does not even name the girl. When you are a servant, you're not out for the credit. Some people like to see their name in the paper, be interviewed by the the media crew that came through to be seeing yourself on the evening news. Yes, we've been doing this for several years. Amen. Some people like to see themselves on television. But a true servant, don't, don't, don't let the camera see you. They might want an interview. See, those, those are the hearts I like. And so, so, so long story short, this little girl goes to, to her mistress if 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 General Naaman would go to Israel and see the man of God, he would heal him of his leprosy. See how a servant thinks? This is the guy who killed her family. What would you think if you were in her shoes? Let the dude rot, man. I want to see that nose fall off personally. I'll go slam one of his fingers accidentally. I'll close the door on his hand. Then watch those fingers fall off a month later. I mean, if somebody killed your whole family, your mom, your dad, your siblings, even the dog, even the animals were slaughtered in these wars. And so, so, so 
this little girl, what kind of mind does she have? The mind of a servant. Don't ever forget that, the mind of a servant. If the, if, if the master would go see the man of God in Israel, we, we don't even know if there are men and women of God. We don't respect anybody. Are you aware that pastors are, the, the, the national sport now is beat up on pastors and religious workers? People are leaving the ministry in the largest proportions we've ever seen. I hope we're proud of ourselves, finishing off men and women of God. I remember one guy walked up to me. He was up here north in the city of De I can't say which one because you have cousins there. Your kids live up there. But this one guy walks up to me, tells me to my face, we finished off Pastor so-and-so, and Pastor so-and-so is even going to lose his credential. We finished, we're finishing him, him off right now. And then he, he made the mistake. You're next. Now, where am I from? L.A. <laughs> I grabbed his suit jacket. And I pinned him to the wall. <clears throat> you do not talk to the man of God like that. Let's pray. Freaked him out. I was serious. I'm not going to hurt nobody. Don't make me pray for you. <laughs> I got cousins that said, well, I'll pray for you now. Mm, you, you messed up. And I just said there, Lord, forgive my brother for such evil as having destroyed two ministers of the gospel. <laughs> no, he's not afraid. It's, uh, that's just a Rojasian comment. Anyway, um, this little girl, if he'll just go see the man of God in Israel, he'll heal him. And so the, the, the lady, you know, having no other option, doctors in Syria had given up hope, and this, his disease is progressing, that Loma Linda is at a loss, there's no research up to date, and you realize I've been destroying Israel one town at a time. I'm Israel's most wanted. Now I'm going to go to Israel and ask for help? Well, that's what she said. And at first, when he went to tell the king, there could be a solution. If I go to Israel, well, you know that would end our war because the leader of the war would be going to seek help. I mean, think, have you thought of that? He who leads the attack against Israel will now be going for the aid of Israel, which would bring the war to an end. And some little child who lost her entire family with the heart of a servant says, go see the man of God. And so the king says, well, take some stuff, man. Ten changes of raiment. We're not talking about stuff from Macy's. Each Robe was a kingly robe. This is, you know, $100,000 a piece items. Plus bags of silver and bags of gold. And, 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 and they made the, because they thought of it diplomatically at first. And, and it's a very common thing. When I would travel, I would always greet the head of state. Whatever country I went to, I would greet the head of state and bring a gift from the United States government. And, or from the Seventh-day Adventist Church, dependent on the reason for my travel to that country. There's a diplomatic purpose. And sometimes it gets blurry. So you have to be very careful. And so they got there, and they went with the diplomatic first. They went to see the king of Israel. What do you mean? I, I, don't, I don't need this stuff. I, here's the guy who's killing my people. You think I can heal him? You're just looking for a bigger reason to invade Jerusalem now. No, no. And he started tearing his clothes, and, that's, and, and that was the sign of grieving and horror. And the king of Israel. And then suddenly, uh, a master, we made a mistake. It's... It's the man of God who can heal you, not the king. Oh, our king, live forever. There's been a mistake. What? Now that I've destroyed a $10,000 outfit, it, it, we were supposed to see the man of God. Uh, we got lost in the diplomacy. Oh, as he realizes, there went his outfit. 
And to a sister, this would mean a lot more than to a man, but, it, but for, to a king, it was enormous. It could take up to a year to build one of their raiments. And Naaman says, I think you can use one of these. <laughs> no, I don't want anything from Syria. So they went out to the heights to look for the house of the man of God. You know, the big houses overlooking the valley. And No, oh, he didn't live up there. Then they went out into the valley and some of the houses along the river. Yeah, yeah. No, he didn't live there either. Then they went out among the adobe huts up in the hood section of the community where the same skinny dog lives. Have you ever noticed when you go into the hood, the same dog is there? It's the dog you saw in San Fernando. It's in South Central LA, the same dog. Go to South Africa, go to Soweto. It's the same dog. That's why I always come on. And you wait for them to come to you. And then you let them sniff your hand. And this is the, uh, the word of a call porter. And then after he sniffs your hand, now you can do this. And now he comes up and <laughs> the same scrawny, skinny, rib laden dog <laughs> lives in every of one of those hood locations. Remember that. I, I, I call him Mikey. Mikey's here. And my kids say, is he brown? Yeah. Skinny? Yeah. Mid-sized? Yeah. The same dog. Isn't that exciting? Of course, now there's also a, you know, a pit bull. And he's uh, the uncle to the same dog. Anyway. And there, in a totally rotted out adobe hut with grass growing on this wall, was the house of the man of God living among the poor. His mind was the same as the mind of this child at Naaman's house. His mind was the mind of a servant. The, the word of God says, as a man thinketh, when it talks about humanity, as a human thinks, so are they. If you think you're good, then you're just someone who stands out who thinks they're better than the rest of us. But if you know you're a servant, you're almost invisible because you're moving freely among the people making a difference. You don't ever get credit. That's the joy of service. And, and, and not, not that credit's wrong, but you look at them on the news, they're all um, embarrassed and out of place. So you work here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do what we can. How long have you been doing this? 31 years. She's been doing it more than all the other smiling people that look at the camera. And she's the one who doesn't feel worthy to see herself on the evening news. The servant can be spotted. And they're, okay, put all the gifts, all right. Name and... The man of God's going to come out, wave his hands over me. And you can hear. <laughs> we lock our doors differently in the hood. <laughs> and this bearded guy with a white line coming out of his eye peeks out. And his breath came with him. A fly passing by died violently. <laughs> Do you see it? Hi, I'm, yes, I know who you are. You are Naaman. The master, is he coming, excuse me? The master has the following suggestion. Go to the river and take a bath. Dip seven times and thou shalt be healed of thy leprosy. Well, excuse me, have a good day. And someone who used to be in the limelight, who saw himself on television as the national hero, I thought the man of God would come out and wave his hands. No, I got to go into the muddy, moving mud bank of the Jordan. No, we have cleaner water back in Syria. Thank you. I'll take my bath there. 
And he was upset. Oh, this rant, even the horses were like, what in the world? Can you see it? I want you to see it with me. The horses said, this is worse than combat. And finally, a soldier, knowing he was risking his life, Sir, may I speak freely? Sir, no, you may not, but but I'm curious to know what you want to say. Sir, please don't kill me. But if the the man of God had said, you know, go out and face a thousand Israelis with a pocket knife, wouldn't you have done it? How much easier is just to get in the water, take a bath? Stop the chariot. (laughs) No me mates. No me mates. Don't kill me. I'm going into the water. Nobody say a thing. This is a classified moment. In government, everything's classified. Everything. And so uh, he's going into the water, and he turns around. The guys are, (laughs) uh, yes, sir. The water, sir. And he's going in. His worst fears is the flooding season. And he's sinking up to his knees. And he's got to go enough to at least be to here. And it is not clear water. And he goes down. Bubbles. Mud. Coming off of him. Six more, sir. Sometimes it's a call of faith to understand the mind of a servant. Sometimes we're outright embarrassed and ashamed to be seen out there vulnerable with the vulnerable. To not think we're superior, suddenly we are all equal, we're human out here today. Five, six, sir, respectfully, sir, one more dip, sir. All right. All right, here it goes. And the Bible says his skin was like that of a newborn infant. Blessed be the God of Israel who has healed me this day. We're going back to the house of the man of God. His hair now is... He is slopped with mud. There's absolutely no dignity to his appearance. He is a moving mud ball. And and the soldiers stop laughing. Dude, he's healed. Okay, like... That part of his ear that fell off, it's back, is it? And he gets back to the prophet's house, and all of a sudden, you might be the man of God that I am, sir. Peace be unto you. Listen, man, you need a new house, okay? Bring the cash. I got some bags of silver, gold. Buy yourself the biggest house in Jerusalem. You earned it. No, no, no. I don't need your money. Listen, those rags are about to fall off. Those threads are barely hanging onto your shoulders. And as an older man, you deserve the dick. You know what? You keep your clothes. Give your stuff to somebody else. I didn't heal you. God did. My God was merciful to you. This is the guy who kills Israelis now being blessed by an Israeli man of God. Men and women of God bless people, you know. Because if we have the mind of of a servant, there's nothing we can't do. Where did this all begin? A little girl with no name in the scriptures. A girl who lost her whole family said, if he goes to Israel to see the man of God, he'll be healed. So he went to Israel and saw the man of God, and he was healed. 
It's the mind. It's the mind. And there's another story. It's found. It's it, it, really quick. I know because you, you, some of you miss dinner and you can't wait to go throw those burritos into the microwave and fix yourself up. Don't worry. Those of you watching, be merciful to those who are stuck here with me. All right, all right. But it, it was when Jesus was taken into custody in the Garden of Gethsemane, remember? You notice that you're not cold anymore? Okay. All right, others of you, I'm still freezing. <laughs> okay. We're told that as Jesus was taken into custody, The disciples, just as Jesus had predicted, scattered every man for himself. If they're doing this to the master, what are they going to do to the help? Every man for himself. All the disciples scattered, just like Jesus had said a few hours ago in the Last Supper. But verse, uh, chapter 14 of Mark, verse 51, And there followed him a certain young man, a kid, having a linen cloth cast about his body, and the young, uh, and the soldiers laid hold on him. In other words, the disciples all ran for their lives. They were beating on Jesus. They were tying him up. The book of Matthew says they were pulling beard with their bare hands. And let me tell you, facial hair coming off your face like that? I was at a stadium event once and greeting the people, and some girl came up, grabbed my mustache, and pulled because the bet in her little circle of buddies out there was that it was fake, that I had glued it on. And she just, <gasps> it's real, I win. Okay, so she won the bet. My lip got very swollen, I was bleeding, I couldn't eat, and I had to cancel the rest of my event there. I had four more messages to go, but I couldn't speak. Don't laugh, it really hurt. Now with Jesus, they actually pulled beard off. Now, in guy speak, this is serious conversation. Sisters, okay, so what? No, 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 no. <laughs> Men with facial hair are right now, <gasps> but they can't show it. Yeah, I've never thought of that. See, but it, we... we don't pull on a guy's facial hair, okay? Just even, no matter how mad or how much you think he deserves it. They were beating Jesus up. By the time he got to the, to the priest, the high priest's house, one eye was swollen shut from the beatings. He was bleeding from all the stuff they had done to his face, just the treatment he was getting, and the disciples ran for their lives. And this little kid says, hey, stop it, or I'll say stop again. And they who's the punk? Grab him. And we're told here, and they sought to lay hold on him, and he ran. And they were able to grab the linen that, that clothed him, and he disappeared into the darkness naked. As a young man, he didn't have the tunics that the older guys wore. It was just a linen. So as these guys tried to grab him, and he's a teenager, he moves fast, he... You know, he still does the 100-yard dash at Loma Linda Academy. He's a sophomore, and he's running for his life, so he knows how to run well. But the tunic kind of went everywhere. I mean, the, the sheet, and they were able to grab that, and, and the Bible says he runs off into the darkest naked. I don't know how he explained to mom when he got to the house. Okay, where have you been? And moms have heard it all and seen it all, but this was weird and he was able to tell mom what happened as she handed him another sheet no no not yet put that on okay ahora cuéntame what happened and let me tell you we're all wondering who this kid was who was the kid uh there's no name uh, um He's not listed in the list of heroes of Scripture. I've never seen a building named after the kid with the linen. I, I've never, theologians ever since, in the last 2,000 years, who was the kid? Matthew doesn't talk about him. John doesn't talk about him. Luke doesn't talk about him. Only Mark mentions the kid. 
And as the studies progressed, and, uh, and I'm not a New Testament scholar, so I left it up to my brother. He's into the Greek. I'm into the Hebrew. I'm an Old Testament scholar. And so there is a hypothesis that has risen among scholars that I agree with. Since Mark is the only one who mentions it, and Mark was not directly a disciple, but he was a kid in the time of Christ's ministry, it's probably Mark himself. Mark had the mind of a servant. This kid, just like the little girl, remains unnamed. No credits, no fame, no glory, no evening news. But he stood up for the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Prince of Peace, the reason why the choir of heaven sings was being arrested. And this kid said, hey, let him go. There's courage when you have the mind of a servant. This week, servants died in Gaza who were there to serve warm meals to refugees. It's not a political matter. Over 200 volunteers of organizations have gone in to serve for the refugees. Over a million people set for starvation. And over 200 have died in war. Greater love, we're told by the scriptures, has no one than that person who's willing to lay down their life for their friends. And you know who your friends are? All those people out there. Brothers and sisters, it's overwhelming when you think about it. The mind of a servant is different than the average mind. And that's why the apostle exclaimed, put on the mind of Christ. He who stood at the right hand of God saw no problem becoming of no reputation. And this is the phrase that changed my life. So he emptied himself and came down here to be one of us and to be faithful, even faithful unto the death of a cross. That is the mind of Christ. He didn't come to be served. He came to serve. And when they were fighting over who's going to be prime minister when he sets up his throne in, in Jerusalem, he, he told them, come over here. I can't tell you who's going to be prime minister. It's not for me to give who's going to sit on the right or the left hand. That's my father. Because they, don't, they just aren't registering that his kingdom is not of this world. If any of you wants to be great, be a servant. If you want to be the greatest of all, be the servant of Oh, you see, talk is cheap. Let's do this. It's not political. It's a gift to humanity that we give of ourselves. Does this make sense to you? Am I crazy? I've only been quoting the word from you. I, I'd love to be able to say I came up with some of these bright ideas, but no, they come from the mouth of God. And so... A good sermon will move the people, but prayer will move the heart of God, and we need to pray like never before. And uh, I had a poster once in my office that said, I was hungry, and you formed a humanities club to discuss my hunger. Thank you. I was naked, and in your mind, you debated the morality of my appearance. I was in the hospital and you prayed for my healing from the safety of your home. I was in prison and you felt my sentence wasn't long enough. You seemed so holy, you seemed so good, but I continued to feel cold and lonely. My brothers and sisters, it's our turn, isn't it? I. Uh, I don't believe in preaching something that I myself don't do. And uh, a good sermon needs to be a testimony. Only what you have seen, right? So I'm in the same mode of thinking. I, I give of myself. It's a self-supporting ministry, but not, that not, not everybody pays. Sometimes I don't get a salary in a month. But we need to make sure folks are served. We don't need recognition. The joy is giving. 
And so, brothers and sisters, this church has a long history of community action. And, 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 and I love that you say unhoused people, because once you say homeless people, it sounds like a breed of some kind of lower life form. And we even use terms, like I mentioned it in the last program, feed the homeless. No, 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 you feed cows, goats, you feed the dog and the cat, but you don't feed humans, you serve food to them. It, it, see, it has to do with what? The mind, it's how we think. And that's why Puente Ministries exists, because we want to inspire, mentor, and mobilize a new generation of leaders. This new generation is not noted for his age. We used to have our hopes in our young people, and we used to say they're leaving the church. No, everybody's leaving the church. Even grandma left. So it's not about who's leaving the church anymore. It's who's been called by God. And how do we mobilize people? So you get inspired. And what's mentoring? When you get taught to think in a new way. That's mentoring. Training is when your skills are are, are improved and you get if you can kick a, a serious goal well we're going to put you on lower uh, 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 body uh, workouts and, and get you to kick even harder we're going to get you to run longer distances to improve your endurance during the game etc but 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 that's training it's what you already possess mentoring is how to think differently steve jobs i was there for one of his speeches in 1984 I was here for my graduate work on this campus, went up to Mountain View, and he says, now remember, there was no internet, there was no Apple, well, uh, there was an Apple IIe, uh, for those who remember the Jurassic period, um, back when uh, paleontology was in its infancy with computers. And, uh, and this guy named uh, Bill Gates said, why would we ever need more than 120K? Uh, anyway. Uh, I know this it doesn't matter to you, but kids are like, I don't understand what he's talking about. It's okay. You're too young. Go to the Smithsonian. They have displays on this. Steve Jobs stood in front of us and freaked us out. He said, in the future, I'll have a thousand songs in the palm of my hand. Okay, I couldn't imagine a thousand albums in the palm of my hand. I'll be able to download my movies what was download? What are movies except what's in the theater that I'm not allowed to attend? Uh, uh, what, what, what? And he says, the day will come when a supercomputer, and I had just been to the San Bernardino supercomputer downstairs below the county building complex, a, a, a five acre underground complex with air conditioning to keep the computers from blowing up, I guess, or melting or something. I still smelled smoke down there. And, and, and now that entire computer is an iPhone. We just sat there, what's he talking about? And what was his mantra? Think different. He concluded with a, a statement, and I can't do it justice, but it went something like this. He had Einstein, uh, uh, Gandhi, King, uh, 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 Earhart and her flight around the world and uh, all these different people. Th these are the crazies. These are the ones who don't fit in. These are the square pegs in the round holes. These are the ones who are nonconformist because the only uh, people who think they can change the world are the ones who actually do. I sat there dumbfounded. So he says, it's in the mind free the mind and that began a process and then i went to la sierra university and was brutalized by two professors charles teal and paul landa these guys took no prisoners and i went from a boy to a man in those classrooms these people changed my life and then they did the worst thing they can do they unleashed me they just opened the gate go go get them Charles came to my graduation here at the University Church Steps outside and uh, says, now go use this degree. It's not a piece of paper. It's a way of life. And he was right. Dr. Landa was right. Only perfect work. Only perfect work gets an A. 
You could tell a Mexican from East L.A. that that's possible? Someone taught me to think different. So we get out there and serve people who have lost hope, and now you bring them hope? They're going to start thinking different. What did that gentleman say at the end of that video? I'm sorry. I know I can learn this thing. And you'll, he is learning because someone's there with him. I hope this is making sense. Don't worry, one day I'll grow up. But I've always been that square pig in a sea of round holes. And I've been splintered and I don't feel sorry for myself. But get ready, I might hit a committee near you and absolutely ruin the meeting. Because I've, I've been told by many managers, you think outside the box, what box? I've never seen this fabled piece of furniture. You mean you guys invented boxes for yourselves? We were there negotiating between Israel and Palestine. At the table was Ehud Barak, Prime Minister of Israel, and Yasser Arafat of the Palestinians, the chairman of the Palestinians. And we had reached a tentative deal. We were this close to inking a treaty for the two-state solution. King Hussein, who was receiving treatments for cancer, flew in from, from Jordan. And then at 4 o'clock in the morning, uh, Arafat pulled out of the deal because he was uh, threatened by a group called Hamas. And uh, he got scared and pulled out. And, the entire deal fell apart and Hussein came and we still had a little ceremony in the East Room, but I felt so defeated. I, I was back there in one of the rooms just, oh, when is this? And then Flo McAfee, a person that I ended up escorting to La Sierra University, an assistant to the president, she grabbed me by the shoulders and said, look at me. Ma'am, we are limited only by the mind. Yes, ma'am. So we are limited only by the mind. If you think it can't be done, it's not going to happen. But if you're crazy enough to believe that God can still pour His Holy Spirit on His people and then they bless the community, if you believe, all things are possible to them that believe. So the question tonight is, do you believe? Well, I'm trying to... No, 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 I didn't say, are you going to try? Do you believe? There was a governor who shouted out at the apostle, Oh, uh, I, uh, almost persuadest thou me to be a... No, 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 no. Be like the one who cried out, I believe. I believe, help thou my unbelief. I, I, I admit my humanity, but I want to believe now. I want to get on a new path. Can this church return to its glory? You've done some serious stuff in the years past. It's time to do them again. We pause for a tuning identification. Agradecemos su paciencia. That's the tune-up that you listen for the offending screen, string. Okay. Um, are you in? We need everybody. I have good news. Jesus is coming. And you know what the better news is? Before he comes, he's sending his people out so that people out there will say, help is coming. Many people will not know who Jesus is until they meet you. People will not know that God forgives them until you forgive them. This Bible's been around the world five times to all six continents. And whenever I baptize a gang member, 
an inmate. I have him tag my Bibles. Tag is graffiti. It's a language that a bunch of us can read, and the rest of you, I don't know what it says. Okay, this is SKEW, S-K-E-W, from Washington, D.C. Can you read it? And he put, catastrophical props for Pastor Rojas. Now, this one got to me. Eastside Guam. The island is only 12 miles by 34 miles, and they got the east side. East side Guam. Okay, I, I don't know what kind of damage you can do out there among the palm trees. These are guys who had just been released from prison. They wanted to put their tag in my Bible. I got some guys who have put their blessings in little corners. They weren't anxious to shine. Pastor, I can't sign you with the word of God, I said. I go, all right, mijito, now for sure you're going to sign them. This guy got released just a week before. First time visiting a church. Dude, this is your home, I said. He says, I see that now. You be safe. Come on back. And, and then others, um, they're not taggers. They just wrote in plain, simple script. But this person... See, so some people get all, you know, I got baptized now. I could take some serious stuff. And, and then and, and I, I went and had this Bible rebound and added more white pages. And um, look at this one. This is Chicago. Jesus, the sweetest tag I know. For there is no other tag under heaven given among men whereby we might be saved. The tag, Jesus. And then sober, of course. He's Mr. Coolness, who is learning the gifts of humility. Carvel Goodlow, who was shot and killed one block from campus at Oakwood. A South African who had just been released from prison gave his life to Jesus. Do you think these people just stumbled across town and got help? No. Folks went out and found them. And now this is... This is um, Milton Coronado. The mayor of Chicago has named it Milton Coronado Day because he does uh, murals all over the city, and they're beautiful. Some girl gets shot and killed by a drive-by. There's a gigantic 50-foot mural of her face honoring her memory, and the city comes and lays flowers there. And Milton is an Adventist pastor, an educator. His dad was shot twice in the back, killed as a gang member. And he did this in memory of my brother. See, uh, my dad and your brother were the same age, you see. So he put, <laughs> put him in the arms of Jesus. See, the street thinks different than we do. That's why we can't wait for them to come to us. We, we go out there. Look at what this dude did in, in, in Toronto. Heaven bound. He'd been arrested five times for vagrancy and, and uh, defacing public property. And then he, I asked him to deface my Bible. Now, right here, these guys, right here, Juarez Cartel, life in prison, murdered many people. We brought a barrel into the prison, 55 gallons, and we, if they were little, it was easy <laughs> to baptize. But if they were my height or more, all we could do is wet their head and christened them. We got, they baptized. I'm crazy, huh? See, servants do weird things. But it's all, here's this one. This is a little closer by. I have to be careful. These pages are starting to tear. This is Tijuana Cartel. And we're hanging out with those inmates. Miami. La Señal del Prayer is saying. So you got all kinds of uh, this Bible has been stolen three times. Please do not add a fourth. I'll put it right here and I'll go greet the people and then I come back and little feet popped out on my Bible. And then it returns all by itself in the mail. I think they get to a page something, thou shalt not steal. I think we better send this. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the Lord has ways of keeping us humble. He's coming, and he sends us to love others and serve them. 
to make sure that it's real to everyone. All to Jesus I surrender All to Him I freely give I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily live All to Jesus I surrender Humbly at His feet I bow Oh, the joys of full salvation Take me, Jesus, take me now I surrender all I surrender all All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Salvador, a Ti me rindo, obedezco solo a Ti, mi guiador, mi fortaleza. I surrender all, I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all, sing with me, I surrender I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. Stand, let's sing one more time. I surrender all. I surrender. Don't forget, tonight you saw the face of God. The best way to understand what it is to see him is to see him in the eyes of his children. As you have done for them, you have done for him. I'm going to disconnect. Let's pray. 
Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, O Lord, and give us that mind of Christ, the mind of a servant. Perform a miracle and get us to think in ways that go beyond our limitations, that there is no limit to what the Holy Spirit can do. Bless us once again. Bless your people once again, O Lord. There's a lot happening and a lot more to come. We praise you. We honor you. We glorify you. This gorgeous sanctuary is not enough. We need to honor you and glorify you and praise you out there where it matters in the lives of those who are hurting. If we're cold in this gorgeous place tonight, how cold are others tonight, Lord, out there? So fill them with warmth and provide for their needs. Grant them a warm meal. And Lord, keep them until they find renewed hope and they find their way again together with us. So Lord, as you have saved us, say, use us to save others. Now bless us. Don't stay here. Go back to the house with us. Don't be a special guest. Live with us. Be a member of the family. We ask in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. look at me just one more time. Go. Tell someone what you saw here tonight. Go in peace.